Another year, another edition of Freeze Art Fair. One of the now familiar aspects of most big art fairs is the inclusion of specially commissioned artworks and projects that act as a counterpoint to the main commercial function of the fair. Curated by Neville Wakefield, this year's Freeze Projects presents 11 commissioned works which in various ways reflect directly and self-consciously on the peculiar environment of the art fair itself. Rather than ignore the weirdly hectic world of life inside the tent, this year's special projects confronts it face on. From Norma Jean's smoking booths, in which visitors can have a quiet, if exposed, smoke inside ventilated cubicles, to Tui Greenford's condensation room, in which the sweat of visitors is captured and put into bottles, the projects provide a quirky, sometimes provocative distraction from the otherwise relentless business of buying and selling. Art Review caught up with a few of the artists involved. Do they fight a lot? Uh, no, actually, normally they are pretty calm. I think that they are just completely overwhelmed with the amount of people passing here. But um, well, it's very funny what's happening now because their language is changing. When they arrived here, they were taught to bark. Yeah. And, and they were actually barking the first couple of days. And then when people started talking to them and they started hearing different sounds, this language was kind of disrupted. So now they are imitating like for example the sound of the alarm here or the walkie-talkie used by the team of the fair and uh, so it's no longer the language that they were actually excited. Uh, uh, explain a, a little bit about the uh, thinking behind this piece uh, because it's a very uh, it's a very uh, particular kind of idea to retrain animals to uh, retrain parents to bark as dogs and then to put it in the art fair. Uh, what was well, the idea of this uh, piece um, is related to my interest in exceeding human logic and the logic within we live. So it, this piece creates a kind of uh, situation of science fiction uh, where um, the, the object or the animal that we see um, creates an image of it um, in our heads and then uh, what we hear does not correspond to this image. So we were basically brought up uh, listening only to dog barking. Uh, ever since they were born uh, and and so they didn't know any other sounds so this is the first confrontation with the outside world other kind of languages you uh, have set up or chosen to set up a massage parlor in the middle of freeze art fair uh, just tell us a little bit about why you know people often complain I always hear rich people complaining about how their feet hurt you know after walking around all day looking at art, so I thought, well, that's funny, you know. Here, here there are art, like they're going around looking at artist artwork that artists make. Someone like me conceivably makes, and then complaining about it at the end of the day because their feet hurt. So I thought, well, how can I sort of close that circuit and kind of solve the problem at the same time? So I thought it would be interesting for me to sort of offer these foot massages as the artwork. Basically, so foot fatigue and art fatigue are the same thing in this. Yeah, I'm kind of combining the two things, but also like thinking about the actual nature of the fair in terms of it being more like a shopping mall. Can you tell us quickly, uh, in summary, the idea behind the bar? This is Circus, a uh, nice uh, Reykjavik bar which is going to be all demolished. Which has been demolished. It has been demolished yeah. because we saved it, you know, yes. basically. You've been invited to present this project uh, at Freeze Art Fair. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's a parasite? Do you think it's uh, a comment, a reflection on the art fair, or are you just happy to be here? Uh, all of what you said. <laughs> all of what you said. Everything what you said. And, and much more. I mean, no. it's so many layers, and it's like, it's also the name, you know, the circus within the circus tent. It's like you, you went to a circus and uh, uh, you, you met people that, uh, you, you know, you had to have something to, to do, mm -hmm. you know, you needed somebody who could yeah. add in something or who had uh, different skills. Mm -hmm. You went to circus, had a beer, and then somebody knew somebody that was at circus that would know how to do it. And it was like a meeting point. Hey guys! Hey, yo. How are you? Yeah, you would like business, yes? Yeah. Of course! I think that this is uh, partly kind of uh, recalling the fact that art comes out of a uh, very concentrated, very uh, introspective or very kind of uh, cliquish uh, groups of people and is that a good thing? 
because I think it is in a way. Yeah, but, but it's like, I mean, for me being an artist, and maybe it's my opinion, but I heard many artists talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, if you're an artist, you hate art <laughs> Okay. And, and, you know, you walk through here and it's like you get this feeling like you, mm. you get too much of this art and it's like works are taken out of context or whatever. But then you have to think about also if you're a collector or whatever, you can, maybe you're trained or you see it in a different way, you know, whatever, you put it in your living room or whatever. And so I think this is, uh, yeah, a place where you can enjoy life and, and then you can call it art. <laughs>